स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tribedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the origin of life on the earth and in that context we have discussed many aspects related to how the life was originated onto the earth and uh, how uh, the different theories are being put forward. So following that we have also discussed about the, uh, you know, how the uh, simple organisms like the primitive cell which is formed into the primordial ocean, it could be developed into a very, very specialized uh, animal, right, or specialized organisms. And these specialized organisms could be invertebrate organism or the vertebrate organisms. Apart from that, if you talk about the plants, the plants are also being evolved uh, from the very, very primitive uh, plants like the single cell plants like the algae. And then it is being uh, gone into the specialized forms like the uh, pteridophyta, bryophyta, gymnosperms or the angiosperms and uh, that all we have discussed in the previous module when we were talking about the classifications and in the previous lecture also we have also discussed about how the uh, how the these forms could have been evolved and we have also understand the different types of experimental evidences what people have put forward and different theories which have actually explaining that how the evolution could have been happened onto the earth so that was sure that the evolution was happened, right? These are uh, uh, these uh, uh, complicated organisms or the advanced organisms are being evolved from the primitive organisms. Now, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the mechanisms, how this could have been done, and uh, what are the different uh, theories and mechanisms which people have put forward to explain how a primitive cell which is formed into the primordial ocean could develop into a very very specialized uh, organisms uh, so with this i think we will start our uh, our lecture so what we have seen what we have discussed so far what we have discussed is that the uh, we have collected the scientific evidences that the organisms are evolved from to the uh, previously existing organisms. We have discussed about the different types of um, stuck, different types of evidences. We have discussed about the morphological evidences. We have discussed about the structural evidences, and that we have discussed in terms of the uh, body organizations, homologous organs. We have discussed about the analogous organs, and we have also discussed about the gradual modification, where we have taken an example of the heart. And this example we have also discussed when we were discussing about the classifications. When we were talking about the classification of the core data, we discussed how the heart is been evolved from a uh, two chamber heart to three chamber heart and the four chamber heart. Apart from that, we have also discussed about the different types of connecting links and then we also discuss about the embryological evidences as well as the paleontological evidences. Apart from that, we have also discussed about the how the fossils are being formed and how you can be able to determine the age of a fossil using the carbon dating techniques or the other dating techniques and based on that the different uh, eras are being uh, you know discussed in the previous lecture as well. So one question is that how the evolution happened and the evolution uh, and what could be the mechanism through which the evolution is could be taking place onto the earth. To understand this question and to address these questions the people have put forward the different types of theories. 
so what are the these theories these theories uh, there are mainly th three theories which are people have put forward one is called as the theory of inheritance of the acquired characters which is been uh, proposed by the uh, lamarck then we have the theory of the natural selection which is proposed by the charles darwin and then we have the hugo dovidis the or the mutation theories so let's start discussing about the each theory and how these theories were explaining the uh, the uh, evolution the mechanism of evolution and what are the their uh, drawbacks and what they could not be able to explain so Uh, let's start with the first theory and the first theory is the theory of inheritance of the acquired character the theory of the inheritance of the acquired character is proposed by the french biologist chevrely de lamarck in his famous book the philosophy geology uh, he proposed that the organisms are not fixed and they evolve from the pre-existing organism by the modification and they have he has assumed the several types of modifications uh, or the several types of uh, assumptions the theory is proposed assuming the three different assumptions so what are the three assumptions the three assumption is there is a need new need then we have the acquisition of the characters and the third is the inheritance of the acquired characters so what is the new need the new need is the variation in the environment conditions and the overall circumstances which affects the existence of the organisms need adaptations in the organism to survive so what the and as a result the organism has to put special efforts to fulfill its new need for the adaptations in the in few case it just needs change in the habit or the behavior of the organisms new habit includes fresh or extensive use of certain organs or the structure of the body or disuse of the other so what the uh, the assumption of the new need says that there are challenges what the people organisms are going to face from time to time and then according to those challenges whether these challenges could be environmental or whether they challenges could be because of the change in the uh, you know the availability of the food or other kinds of things there could be a uh, adaptation there will be an adaptation in the organisms to survive and as a result organism is going to do the modifications in his body right either he is going to start using some organs or it will actually stop using some of the organs and because of that there will be a uh, there will be a changes then it is actually going to act acquire the characters so there will be an acquisition of the characters that we have going to discuss in detail what are the different types of acquisition of the character what could be the mechanism through which the there will be an acquisition of the characters and once there will be an acquisition of the character that acquisition of the character are actually going to be inherited so the character acquired by the one generation are transmitted to the other generation and the subsequently new changes or uh, new characters are been added in the next generation to acquire the perfection which means when the generation 1 is actually going to face these kind of environmental conditions and they will be actually going to change uh, they will be going to face any kind of challenge they will actually going to use the some organs or they will be going to stop using some of the organs and because of that they will be actually going to uh, acquire the some of the characters and these acquired characters are then going to be inherited and that will go automatically or spontaneously to the second generation and then because of that the second generation is not going to face those problems and because of that it will actually going to survive thus Lemax proposed that the evolution is a slow process where characters are acquired over the course of time in the variation nation so that is a whole soul process that whole soul method that the lemax has said that the evolution is a very slow process and it is actually not been done in a single generation it will be done in a multiple generation and because of that it is actually going to acquire different types of characters now the now the question comes how you can be able to acquire or how you can be able to acquire the different types of characters there are three ways in to acquire the character required to adopt into the change conditions these change conditions could be environmental right so you can have uh, 
change in the temperature or there could be a scarcity of water, there could be a scarcity of food like for example, there will be a scarcity of grass right and so on right. So, what is the three, uh, three ways in which you can be able to uh, acquire the characters? One is innate tendency. The innate, there is a ten, innate tendency, innate means there is a spontaneous tendency in each organism to acquire the greater comp complexity and perfection to perform the function. In this process of achieving perfection, the organism is better and better adapted to the change environment. You remember that the example of the heart, right? So, I have discussed when we were discussing about how the modifications into the existing uh, uh, organs could be a could be a way to explain that the evolution is happening and that is a very classical example of the heart heart was two chambered in the beginning and then it was converted into three chambered and then it got converted into four chambered and why it is so because if you have two chambered heart the there will be a mixing of blood if it is a three chambered heart the mixing of the blood is going to be uh, less but it is still be there right because the auricle and ventricles are still be you know be able to mix the liquid uh, mix the blood and the per the efficiency of the heart is also going to be less because you have two chamber heart it is actually going to give you the mixing of the blood and as well as the efficiency as soon as you acquire the final thing that which is the fourth chamber heart it is actually going to be very precise you are going to receive the deoxygenated blood in one chamber you are going to th uh, supply the oxygenated blood from the other chamber and so on. So, because this why the organism have evolved into this because they want to acquire the better perfection. The same is true for many other things, many other examples and why it and then the second point is the use or the disuse of the organ. The use and the disuse of organ affect their structure, shape and the efficiency of the functioning. More usage of a particular organ brings additional strength, size and the more efficiency. In contrast, the disuse or the under usage of the organ gradually make them weaker and smaller and finally, they may disappear as well. Thus, differential usage of organ allowed the additional character in the body during the lifespan of organ. So, that is what it says is that if you utilize the organ, uh, it is actually going to be more strong and it is going to be more and more stable, more and more efficient. Uh, this you can imagine that you know many of the bodybuilders right, they are still using their organs, they are, they are using the you know different types of exercises and because of that they are actually going to build up their muscles. So, that is a classical example to say that if you use the particular uh, organ like for example, if you do a weight lifting you are actually going to uh, strengthen your muscles uh, like biceps and all those kind of things right. So, uh, that is a classical example of the use and disuse of the organ. Uh, then we have the environmental factors. So, variation in the environmental factors such as temperature, light, humidity, wind, enemies affecting the living things and uh, bring changes in the lifestyle and the habits. The combined effect of the use and disuse of the organ and the influence of environmental factor results into the change in the body of the organ organism and these characters are known as the acquired character. So, what is mean by the acquired character is that the character which you are going to acquire which you are not going to get your from your parents right. Acquired character means the character which you are going to acquire during your lifespan and then these acquired characters are going to be inherited into the uh, you know into the offsprings and that is how that was the proposal from the Lamarcks. Now, uh, Lamarck has uh, cited many examples, many observations and many theory, uh, many hypotheses to explain these uh, three phenomena through which the, the, uh, the organisms are acquiring the characters and how that acquire, how the acquisition of the additional characters are helping them in terms of the adopting into the change uh, conditions and uh, you know that is how they are succeeding into the uh, you know into the fulfilling or finish uh, completing their li life spans and that is how they are surviving. So, they, he has uh, uh, cited many examples one of the classical example is where he has cited the example of giraffe. So, he has taken uh, many uh, examples. Uh, so, Lemma in his books explained the evolution of various 
animals to elaborate the proposed hypothesis. One of the classical example is the giraffe. So you know that the giraffe has a very long neck, right? And because of that, it can actually take the food from the even from the uh, very la long trees and high trees, right? So Lemark uses his hypothesis to explain the appearance of giraffe with the long neck and the forelimb. As a theory, the giraffe is evolved from the short height deer-like ancestors. Okay, so initially the the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, giraffe was present as a very short deer like uh, uh, thing right and because of that it is actually taking the uh, food from the grass right which was there on the bottom right but at the same time it was also trying to take the additional nutrition by the taking the nutrition from the so he was using more and more its forelimbs and as well as its neck and because of that it started developing the neck muscles and as well as the height the health of the length of these muscles and because of that it started developing these organs so these ancestors the deer like ancestors are living in the barren place with the leaves on the tree available to them for eating in order to reach the leaves on the tree it stretches necks and the forelimbs as a result these organs get elongated this acquired character in its first generation passed on to the subsequent generation and continued stretching accumulate this character over the course of new generation to evolve the giraffe with the long neck and the forelimb. So what happened is that the giraffe as the uh, as the Lamarck has proposed the giraffe is being evolved from a deer like situation. But these organisms do not have uh, these animals do not have adequate food onto the earth. Uh, or onto the grass right so and they were having the uh, leaves onto the higher and you know higher trees so because to get the nutrition they started utilize using the neck and as well as they started using the more and more and because of the stretching of the neck as well as the forelimb it started developing its neck so in the first generation it started you know developing the neck to some extent and then the that thing continued because every in every generation the giraffe has to survive in that particular environment and because of that the, it has started developing its uh, neck uh, uh, high length and as well as the forelimbs and because of that we it, it, it developed into a, a giraffe with a long neck and the forelimbs. Then the second is uh, the aquatic birds. So other examples of the use and disuse to support the Lamarck theory are blacksmith and the rabbits. So blacksmith acquired large bicep muscles as they do rigorous hammering for the welding, right? This is uh, uh, I have just cited as a uh, bodybuilder. Like so bodybuilders are also doing the same, but blacksmith is also acquiring a very strong biceps because they have to do the hammering for the welding. Whereas the rabbit develops the well-developed pinna muscles to move the ear to receive the sound wave from the different direction to protect themselves from the enemies. You might have uh, noticed when the when you uh, you are or you might have seen the rabbits in uh, zoo or in your home that when you, they can be able to actually rotate their uh, uh, pinna muscles or they can be able to rotate their ears to such an extent that they can be able to hear the sound from each and every direction and why that is so because the rabbit has to hear the uh, the you know entry of the enemy and that's how it can actually be protect themselves from the enemy okay uh, then we have another example of the aquatic birds the aquatic birds such as ducks need to go into the water for food and protection to achieve this they spread their toes to float onto the water as a result of continuous effort they have developed the web between the uh, between the uh, fingers so then we have the snakes okay so snake you know that snake does not have the limb right and why the snake lost the limb the lemark has explained that because the snake is considered to be uh, originated from the uh, lizard like ancestor with the two pairs of fully developed leg. These ancestors need to hide from the mammals and they prefer to stay in places with the dense vegetation which means they are or holes or the narrow spaces 
and because the dense vegetation holes as well as the narrow is actually obstructing uh, the uh, the limbs right so they have stopped using the limbs for and they started stretching their body to hide in the narrow places and did not use the leg because of they do not use the leg for very very long time like the several generations over the course of time continuous stretching of the body made it cylindrical and they lost the legs so that is a classical example of how the disuse of a particular organ is actually going to turn into the disappearance of that particular organ from the subsequent generations then we have the deers deer it is a it is believed that a deer has acquired speed through continuous running in a process to protect himself from the enemy so deer has because deer has to protect themselves from the tigers and all other carnivorous animals it has developed its uh, you know strong muscles and that's how it could be able to run very fast then we have the cave animals so cave animals do not have a well developed eyes uh, and why they don't have the well developed eyes because the cave animals stay in the low light environment and does not use the lights and as a result they lost their vision over the course of time so these are the evidences the what the lemark has put forward but if you have a theory there are also contradictions there are criticisms so lemark has also uh, the people have put those kind of evidences to criticize that particular uh, lemark theories of the acquired characters what are these theories the criticism of the lemark theory is that lemark theory received initial attention but it could not be able to explain several observations the initial two assumptions are correct there is a new need to create by a change in the environment so the people were agreed that okay there is a new need because you have to adopt into the change environment and the whatever the changes you do they are actually going to be acquired by the use and disuse of the organ as well as the environment the inheritance of the acquired character to the subsequent generation is actually arguable because there was no mechanism through which the uh, lemark has proposed or lemark has explained how the acquired character because we said right acquired characters are the character which you are going to acquire into your life span but they don't you don't get those acquired character from your parents so because you cannot get the uh, uh, the acquired character from your parents how the acquired character can go into the next generation right so that a mechanism lemma could not be able to explain or lemma could not be able to verify then there are additional evidences which are actually against the inheritance of the acquired characters the major objection is gathered by the experiment performed by the august wiesman so august wiesman is a, is a is a is proposed that the wiesman's theory of the continuity of the germ plasm that the animal is made up of of two types of cells animal is made up of of two types of cells one is called as the somatic cells and the other is called as the germ cells the germ cells the nuclei present in the germ cell is responsible for the inheritance of the character whereas the somatic cells contain nuclei which responds to the environmental factor or the use and as well as the disuse which means according to the theory of wiesman of the continuity of germplasm you have the germ uh, cells and you have the somatic cells okay so somatic cells are actually the one of the classical example is the muscle cell okay somatic cells are the uh, all the other cells except the germ cells germ cells in the case of humans you have the two different types of germ cells one is called as the sperms the other one is called as ovum right and these germ cells they are the nuclei present in the germ cells are actually be responsible for carrying the genetic information sperm you are going to get from the father the ovum you are going to get from the mother so that's how when they will going to fuse to each other they are actually going to give you the zygote and as well as the offspring so these uh, germ cells are actually going to carry the genetic information from the one generation to next generation whereas the somatic cells which are like classical example is the muscle cells are actually going to respond 
to your habits right if you are using the muscles they will be going to be more stronger and stronger because you are going to use them every day right so they will be actually going to acquire the mass right and that's how they will become more and more stronger uh, but they, that, info, that information will not get into the germ cells because germ cells are very very far away from the somatic cells so the acquired character so these somatic cells are actually going to be responding to the acquired character whatever you acquired like for example when we study into the uh, our classes right that information goes into our somatic cell that goes into our brain that does not mean that if i have done the phd and i have acquired that much information i can be able to pass on that information to my next generation right and that is not possible right because it is not been transcribed or it is not going to be gone into my germ cells and because of that every generation has to study right every generation has to learn how to make the alphabets right when you born you are actually go through that you no know, learning experiences so the acquired characters remains within the somatic cell as a result this theory supports the idea that the acquired characters are not inheritable which means the basic th idea of the lemark is that lemark theory is mostly been dependent on the inheritance of the acquired character so people were not having any objection they pe the people are not having any problem with the that there is a new need for an organism to survive into the change environment and there, it is actually going to use or disuse the different types of organs and that is also going to develop that particular organ the only problem was the third assumption that there will be an inheritance of these acquired character and that's how it has been categorized and performed and there, even the pisman has done several type of experiments to prove that that you are actually if you make the changes into the somatic cells those cells are only going to be modified but the germ cells are not going to be modified in the second generations uh, in fact he what he has done is he has actually done a, he has conducted a conclusive experiment on rat where he has cut their tails for 80 generation and that did not produce the rat without the tailless which means the wisman has cut the tails of the rats so once you cut the tail of the rat the rat cannot use that particular tail right because there is no tail available right so that is actually mimicking the condition that you are dis uh, forcing the organism to disuse that particular organ right but even then when the new bonds are been produced they were not been produced without a tail they will be produced with the tail only okay so that has conclusively be proved that there is a no inheritance of the acquired characters then there are other um, evidences so there are many evidences from the human civilization there are many evidences from the uh, what people have observed during the uh, in other animals as well right so for example the boring of the ear is practiced in women for thousands of year but this character never been inherited you know that in every civilizations the women as well as the men for some time are piercing their ear pinna so that they can be able to wear the different types of ornaments but these piercing which is actually be a kind of a practice from happening from the generation to generation but even then you won't see a newborn born with the pierce or your newborn is born with the hole actually then we have the european women so european women wear tight garments to maintain the slender waist okay but their children have normal waist at the birth so that is another example where the women are actually wearing the tight uh, garment so that they could be able to look slim and smart but that information that is a acquired character does not go into the their children then we have the chinese women so chinese women wear the tight shoes to have the small feet so that is a disuse of that particular organ right so they will be trying to you know constrict that particular use and uh, because so that they want they want to develop a small feet 
but their children have the normal feet. Then we have the child of the athletes are not born with the powerful muscle. Same is true for the blacksmith or the weightlifters. Weightlifters are acquiring the huge power into their muscles, but that muscle's power is not getting correct, you know, transcribed into the uh, their uh, offsprings. Then we have the child of the Nobel laureates or child of the professors are not intelligent as the parents because as I said you know when you are studying you are actually collecting the information into the brain and brain is nothing but a somatic cell right brain is a somatic cell so if you are acquiring and making a changes into the somatic cell that changes are not going to be go into the subsequent generations. Then the Pavlo also has done, so Pavlo was a scientist, he trained the mice to come for the food on bell ring. So when he was ringing the bell, right, when he is ringing a bell, uh, the mice are uh, coming. So they will be getting, they, they are being trained that, okay, when there will be a bell ringing, there will be a food. But what he found is that, that that training is necessary even for the subsequent generation. You are not going to get the kids are automatically being trained because training is also a part of the brain activity or spinal cord activity and both of these organs are the uh, somatic cells. Then we have the eyes of a voracious readers do not grow in size nor they acquire improved eyesight with the increasing age, right. The what Lemark says, Lemark said that if you use a particular organ, that organ is actually going to be more and more efficient, it will be more and more strong, right? But that is not the case, right? When you are see, going to see that many people are actually reading novels after novels, right? Or they are actually going to start read the novels in the night. and But that does not allow their eyesight to be improved or that does not allow their eyes to grow in size. And that character is also not being transmitted to the new uh, generations. So, to address these criticisms, the Lemark has taken uh, a help of the, uh, you know, to the latest information and that is how he came up with an idea of the revised hypothesis or revised theory of inheritance of the acquired character. What is this new theory? This new theory was called as the neo-Lemarkism. So, there are evidences to support the inheritance of the acquired character. For example, Effect of radiation and chemicals on the germ cells and resulting change in the phenotype of the cell, the evidence for the inheritance of the acquired character revived the Lemark theory as the neo-Lemarkism. The, the modified Lemarkism has the following postulates. So what people have observed that if you are actually going to get exposed to any kind of the radiations which is actually going to make the changes into the germ cells, then those changes are actually will go into the subsequent generations and that has actually given the clue of to the people who are supporting the Lamarck theory that this could be the reason, this could be the way in which the acquired character can be able to transmit it to the next generation and that is how they have proposed a new theory which is called as the neo Lamarckism or the new theory of Lamarckism. This Lem new Lamarck theory or the neo Lamarckism has the following postulates. The germ cells are not always immune from the effect of the environment. So, what it says is that when there is a change in the environment, it is actually going to change both. It is actually going to change the somatic cell. It is also going to change the germ cells. And so, if there is a radiation, it is actually going to affect the germ cells, it is also going to affect the somatic cells. Or if there is any change in the environment, that is actually going to affect the somatic as well as the germ cells. The germ cells may affect it directly by the environment without any effect onto the somatic cells. So whatever the effects are happening onto the germ cells, that may or may not affect the somatic cells. The germ cells may carry the acquired character to the next generation. So that is how they have explained the uh, many, many, you know, how the uh, inheritance of the acquired character could be possible. 
But even considering these points, lemmaphism could not be able to provide the satisfactory mechanism for the evolution. They were still having the questions, they were having still the objections which they could not be able to explain and that is how the people have the drop the idea of the uh, inheritance of the acquired character as a best solution to explain the mechanism of the evolutions. So, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the theory of inheritance of the acquired characters where the Lamarck has said that first is that the organism is actually getting fo uh, forced to change its needs, right. It has actually trying to evolve, trying to make the uh, you know system more and more efficient and because of this uh, tendency or because of this habit, the organism has to evolve, right. Why it is so and how it is doing so is because it is using or disusing its organs. If it is using the organs, it is making the organs more and more strong and developed. If it is does not use that particular organ, then it is actually going to uh, shrink that particular organ or it is actually going to disappear. With the classical example, what it has cited is the snake uh, example, right, where the snake has to go through the bushes and when it was having the uh, the legs, it, those legs were actually interfering while going through those bushes. So, what it has done is it has started uh, sliding onto these uh, bushes and without using the uh, limbs and because of that during the course of few generations uh, the, there was a disappearance of the legs. And the third is the inheritance of the acquired characters. So, if you can actually be able to make the changes into the body that will be get inherited that acquire that character is going to be inherited to the next generations and that is how you can be able to develop a new species and that you can be able to develop the new organism which is going to be more and more advanced compared to its uh, uh, you know pre uh, compared to the previous uh, organisms and that is how you if you keep going keep going with that particular uh, modifications you can be able to develop a new organisms. So, these are the few points what Lemarck has put forward and that is how he actually has explained the, uh, the theory of the mechanism of evolutions. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here and in the subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the few more theories where we the people have put uh, their efforts to explain the mechanism of evolutions. Thank you.